The F-15 Strike Eagle has repeatedly proven its effectiveness on the battlefield, cementing its place in the American Aviation Hall of Fame. Nowadays, earlier modifications are being replaced by a fleet of the latest F-15EX, but will their fuselages still be able to support the more modern stuff and keep up with new threats maintaining a dominant position in the sky? Let's find out. The development of the McDonnell Douglas P-15 Strike Eagle, now manufactured by Boeing, dates back to the early Vietnam War, when the U.S. Air Force and Navy engaged in a bitter battle over future tactical aircraft. The then U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, in turn, only added coals to the fire of confrontation between the services, calling on both to use as many common aircraft as possible, even if this entails compromises in the performance of the devices. In January of 1965, the Secretary called on the Air Force to propose a new low-cost tactical fighter for short-range and close air support to replace several types of aircraft, the North American F-100 Super Sabre supersonic jet fighters and various light bombers then in service with the U.S. Air Force. In April of the same year, Harold Brown, director of the Department of Defense Research and Engineering, said that the most profitable solution would be to consider purchasing Northrop F-5 light fighters and at the same time begin work on creating a new experimental fighter. And in order to once again convince the service of the feasibility of such an undertaking, it was decided to slightly reduce expectations for the speed of the future device, going from Mach 3 to Mach 2.5. The turning point came in 1967 when the USSR introduced its Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-25. This aircraft, with a speed of more than Mach 2.8 and large wings that gave it high maneuverability, led to serious concerns within the Department of Defense and the military overall that the future experimental fighter, aka FX, of the United States had been surpassed before it was even able to appear. Therefore, work began in three shifts to improve the domestically produced apparatus as much as possible. In September of 1968, major American aerospace companies received a request for proposals from the Defense Services demanding the creation of a single-seat fighter with a maximum takeoff weight of 40,000 pounds, a maximum speed of Mach 2.5, and a thrust-to-weight ratio of nearly 1 to 1 at mission weight. A twin-engine layout was also required as it was believed that this would benefit throttle response while providing commonality with the Navy's VFX program running in parallel. Before long, four companies provided their vision of the future aircraft. The Air Force favored the options from Fairchild Republic, North American Rockwell, and McDonnell Douglas, but by December of 1969, they ultimately entrusted the development to the latter. Like Navy VFX, FX skipped the lion's share of the prototype phase, moving into full-scale development to save time and avoid the risk of possible program cancellation. The winning vehicle resembled the twin-tailed Grumman F-14 Tomcat but with a fixed wing. The Zero version was divided into two prototypes, the single-seat F-15 and the two-seat TF-15, later better known to us as the F-15A and F-15B. These were equipped with new Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines to achieve a combat thrust-to-weight ratio above 1 to 1, that is, for every pound of weight, the fighter produced 1.17 pounds of thrust from its two engines. The U.S. Air Force's proposed 25mm Ford Philco GAU-7 gun had less luck with its engines, it ran into problems during development and was quickly replaced by the timeless classic, the M61 Vulcan. The F-15A took off on its first flight in 1972, and the two-seat F-15B joined in July 1973. Due to its low wing loading, the F-15 proved to be a wildly maneuverable vehicle with the ability to make tight turns without losing speed. Few of its iron colleagues could boast climbing to an altitude of 30,000 feet in 60 seconds and 65,000 feet in just 122 seconds. This caused many aviation fans and experts to ask, were they building a plane or a rocket? What came as a surprise even to engineers was that the Eagle demonstrated the ability to fly under control with a single wing. This happened after an Israeli F-15D piloted by Zivi Nadivi collided in mid-air with an A-4 Skyhawk. The A-4 instantly broke open and the pilot ejected while the F-15 was sent into an uncontrollable roll. 
Through the application of full afterburner as well as a landing at twice the normal speed, the pilot managed to land successfully at Ramon Air Base. Due to its impressive speed, the Eagle was called an American muscle car with wings, while early versions used the Pratt & Whitney F-100 with 25,000 pounds of thrust each. Today's F-15s are powered by two extremely powerful General Electric F-110 GE-129 turbofan engines with afterburner and a maximum thrust of over 29,000 pounds each. Now, here's where it really gets good. The F-22 Raptor, which replaced the F-15, is slower. The F-4 Phantom, which set several speed records, are slower. The F-14 Tomcat, the F-16 Fighting Eagle, the F-18 Super Hornet, and even the F-35 Lightning II. All of these fighters are slower than the F-15. In fact, we have before us the fastest and most reckless fighter jet ever created in the USA. Since the F-15 entered service in 1976, 50 years later, the Eagle still fiercely at the throat of the enemies of democracy. During this time, 1,198 fighters were created and more than 20 modifications, including experimental aircraft. But the most interesting one today is undoubtedly the F-15 EX Eagle II. This modification belongs to the F-15 Advanced Eagle family of aircraft and is a logical development of the F-15E Strike Eagle design, which started with the F-15SA version for the Royal Saudi Air Force. The modification combines several improvements to the F-15E developed for export, including the full integration of the General Electric F-110 GE-129 engines and the Digital Electronic Warfare System DUS ANALQ-239, which replaced the outdated Tactical Electronic Warfare System TUS. Having put its calculations in order, the U.S. Air Force once again discovered that refreshing and modernizing a fighter airframe that has been proven for decades is an extremely profitable undertaking. New U.S. Air Force F-15EX products include large flat panel display in the cockpit, digital joint helmet-mounted queuing system helmet-mounted display, low-profile head-up display, modified internal wing structure, control by wire system, Raytheon AN-APG-82 ASA radar, activation of outer wing stations 1 and 9 facilitated by the fly-by-wire system, ADCP-2 advanced mission computer, updated radio and satellite communications, advanced electronic warfare and surveillance system Eagle passive active warning survivability system, as well as the infrared search and track system housed in the Legion container. And this is not the whole list. It was not for nothing that this fighter was awarded the title Eagle II, although from the point of view of its capabilities, hardly anyone would hesitate to call it second, even against the backdrop of the shadow of its heroic ancestor, the original Eagle. Design brought to perfection, honor of battlefield renown, improved maintainability and low maintenance costs are just the start of what the F-15EX offers the U.S. Air Force. But the coolest feature of the F-15EX, which puts all existing and possible competitors on the edge, is the load capacity, or rather the ability to carry one of the most colossal air-to-air -air loadouts. There are 12 weapons in the loadout, almost 30,000 pounds of gift-giving capability for everyone who chooses not to live in peace and harmony, or who likes to violate the territorial integrity of other countries. A closer look at the 12 hardpoints reveals AIM 9X Sidewinder and AIM 120 AMRAAM air to air missiles, air to surface missiles AGM 158 JASM, AGM 88 HARM, and AGM 183 Arrow, as well as a variety of bombs from GBU 31 and GBU 38 JDAM to GBU 39 small diameter bomb. Additionally, there's increasing evidence that unlike the typical advanced Eagle configuration with 12 air to air missiles, the F-15EX can be armed with 16 AIM-120, 4 AIM-9, and 2 AGM-88 Harm. Oh yes, we almost forgot. With all the innovations, the native 20mm 6-barrel Gatling gun M61A1 Vulcan with 500 rounds of M56 or PGU-28 ammunition remained in its rightful place. In terms of countering the latest enemy air defense systems, the Eagle II is unlikely to be able to compete with the stealthy F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, but it can be an excellent help as a wing brother in missions to gain air superiority, defend territory and air bases, maintain no-fly zones against limited air defense, as well as deploy large-sized remote weapons to support stealth fighters on the line of contact.
The first operational F-15EX was delivered to the 142nd Wing in Portland June 6, 2024. The Fresno Air National Guard Base in California and Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans in Louisiana were selected as the preferred locations for these squadrons. 18 F-15EX, each due to the ongoing recapitalization of the F-15C. Two additional Eagle II squadrons are deployed to Kadena Air Base on the Japanese island of Okinawa, where they'll fill the gap left by the closure of a pair of F-15CD units. As for future plans, the U.S. Air Force is currently limited to 98 fighters out of its original 144 planned, which covers five operational squadrons of 18 aircraft with a couple of training and test aircraft. With the cost of one Eagle II about $87.7 million, including the hull, engines, radar, and other key systems, they risk overtaking or at least catching up with even the fresh F-35. Despite rumors about expanding the fleet of 98 Eagles to 150 to 200 units, in the next decade, the service will devote much more time to developing a fleet of the latest B-21 Raider stealth bombers, F-35 Lightning II fighters, and their collaborative combat aircraft in the form of hundreds of drones, as well as the recently launched NGAD program for a light reboot. On the other hand, is there any reason to exchange a loyal steed that has served you faithfully for more than 50 years for a new but shiny one? Perhaps you must answer this question for yourself. Do you think the U.S. Air Force will be able to expand its Eagle II fleet against the backdrop of rapidly approaching 6th generation fighters? Let us know your take in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.